All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, so somebody had sent me uh, a comment that was made regarding Puerto Ricans and us. Uh, it was like basically insinuating that we or some somebody said that we created hip hop. Now, I don't know who's making comments like that. Um, but what I will say is that we have played a large role in hip hop since its origins. Did we create it? No. So as far as us actually creating it, no, I'm not going to say that we created it, but we did play a large hand and we have been it since the beginning. So I have a few articles here and I have um, some stuff from a book that I want to read off. So this is from uh, New York Rican Magazine. What is hip hop? And hip hop. The term is defined as an American subculture that originated in the 1970s South Bronx. Hip hop itself is broken down into four forms of artistic expression. Oral, MC, rapping, beatboxing, made up of three components, its contents, flow, and delivery. Auditory, DJing, scratching, made up of turntablism, sampling, synchronization. Physical, breakdancing, b-boying, made up of Brazilian capoeira, Asian martial arts, Russian folk dance, and funk style. Visual, graffiti. Graffiti started in Philly, PA, the early to mid-1960s. By 1968, Julio 204 is recorded as the first graffiti artist in New York. And to my knowledge, Julio 204 is Puerto Rican. And it talks about the, you know, the four corners of hip hop. It breaks down Rocksteady Crew. And I'm going to leave like the links to everything um, in the comments. And then I kind of want to scroll down to here. Graffiti and Puerto Ricans. The first New York graffiti artist to surface New York was Julio 204, who was Puerto Rican. That was like what I said. Now, the reason why I had said that prior to reading this is because I did look at this article briefly, but I didn't get to this point of it. <clears throat> um, I was actually paying more attention to um, the book that I will be uh, sharing in a couple of minutes. But I actually knew of this, you know, from back in the day or, you know, I had a good feeling that he was Puerto Rican. What I will say before I continue reading is that Puerto Ricans, to my knowledge, when it comes to hip hop and um, our contributions, they were mostly with the dancing and the art. Yes, we did do, you know, there were some of us that did, you know, there were people that did that, that rhymed, that emceed or what have you. But for the most part, um, a from what I think of and what I remember and what I recall from back in the day and growing up around that time, that was our biggest contributions. I used to know a few breakers. Um, I knew a lot of graffiti heads. I knew a lot of graffiti heads back in the day. Um, not this Julio 204 person because that was way before I was born. Uh, but, you know, back in my time, I did know a good amount of um, graph heads. Okay, so he grew up in Washington Heights and belongs to a street gang known as the Sav Savage Nomads. Julio 204 is recorded as far back as 1968, tagging with markers and spray paint, which is thereafter recorded by gangs such as the Savage Nomads, Mama House, La Familia, and Savage Skulls. Taki 183 was the first to be recognized by the media in 1971. I remember seeing that all over the place when I was a kid, that name, wow. Uh, Joel 82 started bombing, which is when you tag any surfaces, as many surfaces as possible for recognition outside of your neighborhood, which led to gangs buffing, <laughs> uh, which led to graffiti gang wars, inspiring uh, documentaries and movies such as Beach Streets, who bring graffiti and breakdancing together in this original dance revolution. Please watch that movie if you can. It's, it's so good. That's really, I haven't seen it in such a long time, but that movie came out a long time ago. Very good documentary. Um, and as you can see, these are all little um, murals here. New York back in the day, that's all you used to see. You don't really see it as much anymore. Um, back when I was a kid, a, a small child, I remember uh, the subways were always like filled inside the train and outside of the train. 
were filled with graffiti just from the top to the bottom of each car i remember and that was back when you know during the crack era when there used to be trash and stuff on the trains um and I always used to wonder as a little girl, like, how do these guys get on the top of the train? How do they get on the side? Like, how do they do these, these huge pieces um, outside of the train cars? I never used to know. Um, but uh, they did. They, they used to manage to do that. I guess it was at night or at times when the trains, um, when they would stop the trains at certain por- um, parts of the night, they used to do it. Um, I, I even heard of guys that used to get run over by trains because they used to do stuff in the tracks and the train tracks and there was a few guys a few graffiti heads um that got run over by trains uh so that was how pe- how serious people used to take that art back in the day so and latinos hip-hop look you have big pun over here and this basically talks about um latinos but most specifically puerto ricans and hip-hop So hip-hop is historically taken to be an African-American expressive culture. Latinos are excluded from from hip-hop core on the basis of racialized pan-ethnicity. At the same time, Latino population numbers and visibility increases in the United States. A variety of national origin groups with different experiences of colonization, annexation, and or immigration to the United States, as well as different histories of structural structural incorporation are lumped together under a Latino pan-ethnic banner. This wide social phenomenon manifests itself within the hip-hop realm when Latino groups when Latinos are grouped together on the hip hop margins under the presumed commonality shared by Latino hip hoppers. Puerto Ricans in the United States are commonly thought of as being part of the US Hispanic or Latino population. However, Puerto Ricans are also considered an exception among Latinos. Okay. This exceptionality is based on a history that diverges from what has been construed as the Latino norm and happens to share much in common with the experience of African Americans, which is what I've been saying for a a long time, okay? I used to say that on my old channel, and I've said it a few times on this channel, all right? Hip-hop is one of the most vibrant products of the late 20th century youth culture. New, New York Puerto Ricans have been key participants as producers and consumers of the culture and hip hop art forms since hip hop's very first beginning during the early 1970s in the South Bronx. Okay, so again, this is something else that's just validating us being there since the beginning. Not that we created it, but that we've been there since the beginning. All right. You can't culturally appropriate something that you've been a part of since its origins. That doesn't make any sense. DJ Vlad is a cultural appropriator. Bad Baby is a cultural appropriator. These Asian rappers, those are cultural appropriators. Puerto Ricans are not cultural appropriators. All right. Although it is widely acknowledged that hip hop began in the early 1970s in the South Bronx, New York, the mainstream media view it as an African American cultural expression. African Americans tend to view it as exclusively their own, which is exactly what's happening now with some of these people that are putting down Puerto Ricans and our contributions in hip hop. And even Puerto Ricans and other Latinos tend to view it as black music. However, its birth and development were a joint creative effort of African American and Latino Caribbean youngsters, particularly Puerto Ricans. Some research has suggested that that Puerto Ricans' significant role has often been overlooked due to the lack of knowledge concerning, concerning Puerto Ricans in general, their small population in comparison to African Americans throughout the United States, and their relatively recent arrival as opposed to the long history of Af- African Americans in the U.S. Hip hop began as an expression of poverty stricken inner city minority youths who grew up during the 1960s and 70s. That was my parents. That's the, around the time that, uh, you know, my parents were uh, on the younger side around that time. It is a musical form that incorporates a shared lived urban experience that revolved around music, rhyming and dancing often makes a social statement against the harsh realities they must deal with on a daily basis and graffiti. While African Americans concentrated on serving as disc jockeys and masters of ceremonies, Puerto Ricans and other Latino 
Caribbeans contributed heavy to the hip hop aspects of break dancing and graffiti, which is exactly what I said earlier. The music industry played a crucial role in the proliferation of hip hop as African American music formed by refusing to sign Puerto Rican and other Latino hip hoppers to contracts because they would not turn a profit for them as would African Americans. That's very interesting. They were gambling on sheer numbers rather than on the appeal of music despite ethnic origin. Among Puerto Rican pioneers of hip hop and rap are Rocksteady Cruz Crazy Legs, Devastating Tito, and Master OC of the Fearless Four. Among other Puerto Ricans who have contributed to hip hop as rappers, MCs, DJs, or B boys and B girls are, U- are Q Unique, Porter Rock, DJ Tony Touch, and Fat Joe. Um, DJ Tony Touch grew up in my area. I've actually seen him a couple of times. <laughs> Seems like a regular dude. Um, and Crazy Legs, uh, I went to school with his daughter, actually. We went to the same art high school. Very pretty girl. <clears throat> and this here is from a book called Puerto Rican and Proud Boy, <laughs> Rap Roots and Amnesia. And basically this book... Um, just highlights how um, Puerto Ricans have been, uh, basically, have been er- erased from hip hop from from a, a long time for a long time now because this was written, I believe, in like the late '90s or early 2000s. Okay, this is 1997 over here. So I'm gonna start reading off from where it says the point. Then, so this paragraph over here, this is like the the second paragraph. The point then is not that it's a Puerto Rican thing too, or even yo, we were here from the jump. Though contentions for turf or pieces of the pie are integral to the conventional grammar of toasting and boasting, and obviously germane to any geography of rap as public discourse. The revision called for rather than merely additive is actually conjunctive, such that the emergence of rap may have been seen as testimony to the cultural interaction between the black and Puerto Rican communities, especially as evident among the young people. Of course, it is possible to identify specifically Puerto Rican ingredients that went into the original brew of hip hop, that formative contribution being even more apparent in breakdance and graffiti than rap. Again, this is something else that's validating what I said before. But this line of analysis usually leads to the notion of the tinge or the touches of salsa thrown in to add zest to the recipe. The beginnings of rap are connected not so much because they link black traditions and Puerto Rican traditions, but because they mark off one more step in a long and intricate black and Puerto Rican tradition of of popular culture based primarily in the long-standing black and Puerto Rican neighborhoods of New York City. Seen in this way, rap and hip-hop can be understood to have not only identifiable social origins, but a prehistory as well. For long before there was any talk of rap as a mode of public performance, or for that matter of cultural fusions or hybridization, Blacks and Puerto Ricans were already busy jamming, partying, struggling, or just hanging together in all aspects of everyday life, all the while building a new cultural tradition which is more and different than the sum of its component parts. Latin jazz, doo-wop, the last poets in the third world revelation is boogaloo and Latin soul and many other movements and styles are all examples of this meshing an increasingly seamless tradition. This emergent, tra- this emergent tradition attests at an artistic level to the African foundations of both cultural backgrounds and to the close confines of their common social placement shared tenement buildings, shared workplaces and welfare lines, shared classrooms and playgrounds, shared and coalescing political causes. And it is this joining of expressive forces, this construction of new cultural memory in common that comprises the most immediate source of hip hop. Okay, and you know, this is this is a pretty good a pretty good read. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I can leave this um, in the description box. If not, I'll just leave the name. I'll just need the name of it <clears throat> at the bottom. So if anybody is curious about reading more about this, you can go ahead and look at it for yourself. Um, and it's, it's a shame that this is happening. It's a shame that there's um, people that are going out of their way just to do this or just to, 
you know, use use this as a means to um, insult Puerto Rican people and, and insult our contributions to something that we've been a part of since the beginning. And I, you know, I do I do find it wrong. Um, I know that there are certain movements that exist at this point that um, rely heavy on lying on certain groups, you know, um, especially certain, you know, quote unquote, foreign groups. Um, so, you know, I figured I would do this just to kind of, just to kind of prove that we've been there, you know, that we've always been there. Um, because you shouldn't lie on history. And I think that's what people are trying to do now. They're trying to rewrite history and, you know, basically trying to write us out of this, <laughs> of hip hop, I guess. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope you all have a very wonderful Valentine's Day with your loved ones, with your significant other. And I guess I will see you all in the next video. Bye.